want to understand fascia in movement, you should understand the, the collagen properties. Collagen, you can't uh, stretch that much. It's 3 to 5%. But when you stretch it and let go, it comes straight back. So, um, so and that's what we do when we load our fascia in different kinds of movements. And <clears throat> that's free energy. So it just recoils back. And that's what I need to do. I need to load my fascia a lot in order to get back that catapult effect, which is free of cost. <laughs> it just takes a little bit of energy to load the fascia. And that's only uh, possible when your fascia is healthy, if it's elastic, if it's not um, tethered, adhered to different um, layers surrounding it or neighbors. Then you can see something like this. And that might influence how you move because it it comes with processes of um, destructing and uh, rebuilding um, cells and if you have an overuse or pain you will go into just a <clears throat> into into a more comfortable position so you will have evasive movements and if you have evasive movements you might shorten that part of fascia in the end so you have to just work with that fascia make it free bring it back to gliding speak to the receptors so that they do what they should do and and so these are the major points how fascia will have it or will, will be influenced by active or passive habits so that people understand what when they do something often enough with probably a lot of force with a lot of range of movement they will change their structure and that will change how they move and how they um, how they stand or um, their whole posture and that's that's an important part of uh, of yeah knowledge and, and approach f to, to go back to to have a, a I'd say a, a perfect or a good taping technique or taping approach here you can see some of the patterns <clears throat> so why the thorax is shifted to his right or the pelvis is more to the front it's the fascia that can hold us in that compensation because if fascia um, is shortened or adhered it has a mechanical st mechanically strong property to hold us there and here is uh, one of my players that I uh, treated twice just by looking at his posture I can see so many things and draw so many conclusions without speaking to him <clears throat> and he came uh, with pain between the shoulder blades so the rhomboids were painful and the highest I had to tape was the low back so like it was L L201 and then there his his pain in the shoulder blades was was gone so it was a lot of the um, superficial backline of of the legs <laughs> and and a lot of um, <clears throat> pelvic work to bring a um, a balance back into the pelvis and so the force will be transferred um, more evenly and it can offload a long chain and that's what happened I went to a part which could um, tension a uh, more or less the whole chain and if I find the part which tensions the whole chain I can offload the whole chain and his his uh, pain between the shoulder blades were, were gone within a few stripes but I was way uh, far away from from the pain of uh, part of pain so assess posture <clears throat> assess the quality of movement that was when I worked uh, with the Bundesliga player and actually I was teaching the therapists and the doctors in my approach of taping and there were there was four players they came in and had pain and left without pain <laughs> uh, his 
his squat, his single leg squat um, on his left was not that good as the right one. And a lot came from the hip and a few, a uh, little bit came from, from the knee itself. So I need to see how people move, how the tissue moves and, and assess it. And, and the quality of movement is something that is not really taught too deep, too too much or uh, uh, enough in, in the field of physiotherapy or even osteopathy. Just by seeing someone moving, I uh, can draw so many conclusions and that's also part of my assessment. And then the range of motion <clears throat> and also in relation to pain, that's also a, a, an, an, an important parameter because if you have a lot of tension, you, your movement will be restricted definitely into a certain direction um, on the right picture that's that's the length of how much he how how much more he could move to bend forward so but i have to say he had a um, problem at the popliteal fossa so and so with a ratio of pain between four and five and i asked him uh, when does this pain start to increase when you bend over? And after I've been, uh, after finishing the taping, he came to this point with this with only a 0 0.5 uh, amount of pain. So the range of move motion was, uh, I think it was 52 centimeters. And his pain was at the beginning was four to five, reducing to zero point five, and it was uh, quite acute. So he had a match two days ago, and was injured then. And so you can also say it's not, it's it's not about chronic or acute. Um, it just offloads the tissue, addresses the receptors. And you will have a, a decrease or normalization of of the tension, and therefore he can bend over further with less pain. Okay. Now it looks like I can just see the tape there. It looks like you had a, a spiral pattern for the tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it often so that that that's not a basic technique. <laughs> no. So the basic techniques are what you have to do. So when you if you would look at the back of the thigh, you would see uh, the tape going in fiber direction because in order to offload Golgi's, they are in fiber direction. You have to shift tissue in fiber direction. But in the end, so or, or no matter how complex a problem is, you would start with basic application, which, which are kind of a recipe. But then it depends on the historical, yeah, history of the myofascial system of that very person. And then it can, you could have 10 people with the same problem diagnosed, but I would end up taping into or shifting tissue into different directions in the end. Not the standard techniques or standard applications, but whatever it takes to find the, the structures that need a certain offloading and shifting. And, and here, what you can see at the knee, that's definitely not a standard technique. <laughs> Anything spiral is complicated. <laughs> uh, yeah, that what's, that's what, what makes it fun <laughs> to find out. Yes. <laughs> yeah, whenever you have, a, or, or many athletes, the spiral line is one of the, uh, is, is a line where you can find out a lot where you see rotational patterns and and it's a line that's also an important part I think uh, the, the anatomy trains are not um, not so coherent with communicational fibers there are parts where the distribution of tension is really so direct and a huge diff distance but sometimes you have a break and the the distribution of the or the force transmission force transmission sorry the force transmission is not that direct and so it's it's really important 
how many com uh, communicational fibers you have. So how many co uh, fibers go from one muscle to the next to the next and how many uh, fibers do attach to the periosteum or the bone. If many fibers connect to the bone and not so many go further along to the next part of the chain, then you will have not such a strong force transmission as if there's many communicating fibers going to the next part of the chain. And so what, what would be an example of one with uh, like a strong uh, bond with the, the next level and one so like the short head of bicep sort of thing and to the fibular head and down the perineals and maybe that's too too deep information <laughs> i should keep people interested in coming to my workshops <laughs> and then